Thanks, Wendy, and thanks to all of you for coming out tonight and for the organizers. I think this is really a great idea to get together and talk about ideas like this, and it's especially rewarding to take part in a place like Ann Arbor where we have very committed people um, willing to take risks and, and do things uh, in an innovative way here. Uh, it's my job tonight to uh, explain land use and access, and I'm going to do it with one idea. So that one idea is that um, we ought to be aiming for interaction, all right? So when we think about transportation, we should not be thinking about moving, but rather interaction. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, let me start by talking about place. Everyone knows the age-old adage of real estate agents that um, the three most important things about um, real estate prices are location, 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 right? Well, that idea is simply saying um, that place matters. We know that place matters, but let's think about how, where you're located in geographic space matters. Of course, depending on where you're situated in space, it says a lot about your ability to engage, to interact, to interact with the people and the places that you like to do business with. Schools, jobs, stores, community centers, all of that is very much rooted in place. So we value place, not just by dollar values of property in the location, location, location scheme, but also we value it because it enriches the quality of our life. Place is also important because each location ties us into a different network of opportunities and constraints. It determines to some extent the social networks that we engage in. Again, think about how you interact with people in your lives, whether it's through schools, community centers, places of worship, all of that is very much tied to place. And we can illustrate that by thinking about how um, a family who lives on one side of a district line sends its children to a school that has perhaps um, um, a, a strong reputation for being an excellent place to go to school, and yet a family on just the other side of that line sends its children to a school with a lesser reputation. So again, place has a lot to say about the different opportunities that we have, and of course, place is very much rooted with into race and ethnicity and income in the United States. And central to all of these things is the idea of interaction. We're interacting with people and places all the time. The degree to which we can do that is important in transportation and land use has a lot to do with our ability to interact. Let me illustrate what I mean by transportation and how it interacts. I'm gonna give you a scenario. It's Saturday afternoon and you have four errands to run. Say you've got a teenager who needs to get to the high school for um, theater rehearsal, your younger daughter needs to get to baseball practice at a local park, you need to pick up a prescription from the pharmacy, and your partner hollers at you as you're running out the door to pick up a candy bar at the party store on the way home. All right, so you've got these four things to do. Let me ask you, um, would you rather travel fast or would you rather travel slow? My guess is that you probably would say that you want to travel fast, right? I would say that it depends. And it depends on, I would ask instead, what is the sum total of time it's going to take me to accomplish those four tasks? That is actually what's most important to me. How fast I travel is of much less importance to me than the sum total of that time. Now, what if I told you that I could accomplish those four things faster by going slow compared to this guy over here who can actually travel faster but doesn't accomplish them in the same amount of time. Huh? What am I talking about? How can that be? The difference is that compared to this other guy, I have these things close to me. So proximity enters into the equation, all right? So it's not just a question of transportation and how quickly we can move things, and yet our transportation policy that comes down from federal and state 
um, regulations and embedded deeply into the codes and standards that we follow tends to emphasize our ability to move. So transportation wants us to move places. So let me then, um, this is then what typically we aim for in transportation policy. The goal up on top is mobility. We want to move things, and we do it through all sorts of different ways. Down below, these means are just capturing a few illustrations for you. We might expand capacity. We might use travel demand management. I'm not going to get into what those things are. I'm going to say a big no to that and say, instead, there's a better way. What if we said, that our goal was not to move, but rather to interact. And I'm calling that accessibility, okay? The amount of interaction that I can accomplish in a given period of time. Let's make that our top goal. And by the way, it really is our goal. When you go out to travel, any time you take a trip, it's not the trip itself that you're doing it for. You want to just get there. I mean, it's, it is true that occasionally we may take maybe a Sunday drive for the pure joy of moving around, but most of the time we'd rather not. I'm guessing you're like me. If it was Star Trek, I'd be happy to ask Scotty up on the Starship Enterprise to just beam me to where I'm going to illustrate that it's really just getting there that's the important part. So how could we do that? One is through movement, okay? So, all else equal, if we move faster, we can get to more places. But it's not the only way. We can also, through connectivity, in these days, I grew up at a time when getting to the resources here at the library meant that I had to travel to the library. Now I can actually accomplish a lot of this through the internet. So we can also accomplish things through connectivity. And finally, proximity. All right, so land use policy can help us achieve our goal in ways that we, hadn't, we don't normally think of with transportation policy. Why is this chart important? One, because it puts at the top the goal of, uh, it, it, it better represents reality. It, it, accessibility is what we want. It's not movement, so that it demotes mobility. It also give, it points out that there are other ways of achieving this goal of accessibility. Um, it opens up the possibility of achieving this goal in other ways, and it highlights the importance of proximity. But now here's the real kicker, this. These two things, mobility and proximity, work in tension with one another, all right? So normally, and let me illustrate the tension with a couple of pictures. I'm going to show you two extreme pictures. Here's, an ex here's a picture where there's not much proximity. Things are spread out. But where things are spread out, we travel fast. You can imagine the cars on these roads are probably going 80 miles an hour, okay? Another extreme is downtown Manhattan. Things are really close together, and that means that, things ha that we have to travel slowly. Those poor suckers down on the road there are just crawling along, right? And we probably don't want to be there. All right, so proximity and speed are in tension with one another. Let's go back to this and think about it in terms of accessibility now. How much interaction in a given time? Let's say I put a magic accessibility clicker on the dashboard of a car, and every time I pass a place that might be useful for me, my clicker goes off. On this example, I get to go real fast, and normally fast says success, but my accessibility clicker would go click, 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 maybe, and then for a long stretch, no more clicks. Here, I don't want to be moving slow, but yet my clicker is going click, 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 click. All right, so accessibility, there are advantages here. And my research, along with my colleague Jonathan Levine at the University of Michigan, is telling us that the proximity part is actually helping metropolitan regions accomplish more in a given time, even when we move more slowly than we'd like to. Just to illustrate the importance of land use, okay? So, I'll wrap up here by pointing out, I'm going to make two points to conclude. First, when we take steps to increase mobility, let's stop and ask, 
The mobility may be helping accessibility, but is it also hurting us in proximity? How does it hurt us in proximity? <laughs> Think about sprawl. When we built highways to the periphery of metropolitan regions, <laughs> land use developers respond and they build further and further out. Okay? There are all sorts of other examples where mobility can harm proximity and undermine our goal of accessibility. And I invite you to think about that tonight as you listen to presentations and maybe we can talk about it during Q&A. The second point that I'll conclude with then is how do we achieve this? Let's just think about a real simple two-part recipe. One, let's make accessible places through our transportation infrastructure and through land use policy. And then second, let's let people live and work in those accessible places. And that usually means that high densities can help us achieve that. So I invite you to think about this one idea. Let's think about how to make interaction the goal rather than movement and see what comes up as you think about this through the presentations tonight. And I look forward to your comments during Q&A period. Thanks very much. <laughs>